Doki, Doki, Literature Clever! Okay, so it's time to go uh, make another poem. 100% Natsuki. Natsuki or bust. Natsuki is best. There's no food on here. I'm gonna guess. Oh, well, pink. Probably pink. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Is there any food? No, there's a sticky. Sticky could be it. Music could also be it. Music treasure. It was sticky. Oh, I'm, I love myself. Peace, melody. I feel like those are Sayori. Ribbon, maybe? Yes. Uh, marshmallow. Boom. I think Parfait was on there, too. I could have picked that. Anime. Boy. Ma lollipop. Definitely. Uh, bliss, rose, vanilla. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm killing it. Sweet. That could also be what's her face, but I'll try it. Gosh, dang it. Sunny. I think Sunny is the other girl. Charm. It could be charm. God, look at this suicide tragedy. Party. Party. Come on, please be party. Gosh, dang it. Kiss, amazing smile, play. I have, I was doing so good and I have messed this up. I don't think it's going to be kiss, right? That's the Sayori thing. Wonderful, precious. I'm going to try kiss. Yes. Kiss me, girl. Freaking kiss me. Uh, Try skirt. Yes. Freaking killed it. Strawberry. I love that the food one, it's easy. Bubbles could be her. Or fluffy. We'll do fluffy. Yeah. Yeah. Kawaii. Sugar. Oh boy. Fester Valentine. Or let's do Valentine. Yes. Oh my god. I am killing this one. Cute. And the last one. Oh, this is confusing. Jumpy uh, flower, maybe? F off. Um, rainbow. Which one is right out of clouds, rainbow, or summer, or fireflies? Like, come on. They make it so difficult. Everyone's saying rainbow? Watch this. Sayori. Oh, he needs no. some milk! Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, my dude! Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood, but I guess it's always the simple things with you. Oh my gosh. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? Uh, no thanks. Huh? That, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Wait, what? Uh, why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh, uh... Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. She ain't got no money. That's why I was supposed to go buy her a snack. She turns it upside down and lets the content spill into the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Uh, 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 I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. I am so much smarter than you, you freaking idiot. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. Detective, my dude. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that leaves only one option. Ah, I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Huh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Uh, uh, I wasn't listening or anything. Uh, it was just something in my book. Yuri, tell my dude to let me borrow some money. That's, th don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. I didn't mean that. I, I got too absorbed into my book. Uh. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's kind of throwing shade a little bit. That's, there's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. I think res resolution? Retribution. Sure. That. Still, coming from you, Sayori, I guess there's a little devil inside all of us. It oh, it's creepy. <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, you wouldn't have come if it wasn't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. You are so manipulative, girl. Come on. Give me more credit than that, Sayori. No, that's really why I came. What the frick? Did she just get slapped? Yeah. Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow. What was... Huh? A, a cookie. 
<laughs> Should have caught it in your mouth. That's what I would do. Ah, sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. I is this a miracle? <laughs> it's because I paid my restitution. Oh my gosh. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just going to give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Ha <laughs> ha. Natsuki. That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. You are 100% anime girl. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori, Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Mm. Sayori suddenly clasps her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try? I think we all see what they're doing there. Jeez, beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sari gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms. Can we get the fan service out of the way, please? Ah, uh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off her. Um, Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori runs away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori- Huh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh, where's Monica anyways? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me! Yeah, I haven't either, but no one talks to me, so that's not a surprise. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Yeah, that's why she's awful. Huh? You don't think she... She has a... Uh... Wait, has a what? Boyfriend? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> that's true. Excuse me? <laughs> Have you seen this? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Uh, but boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up anyways? Ah, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it, since I was practicing piano. Piano? In study hall? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't, really. I, I, I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. Uh, that Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That- Oh, that's me. That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, my dude. She needs to calm down. Listen, no, 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 no. I didn't choose to flirt with you. My dude did it by himself. Uh, I, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Aha, uh -huh. don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. I'm tr trying not to flirt with you. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Uh, no, no, not not really. Other than people freaking having a cookie fight and extreme fan service. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyways. It looks like everyone's already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri's back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Let's go get her! It's not long before Natsuki comes up to me expectantly. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, I kept my promise. I pull the first volume of Parfait Girls from my bag. Natsuki takes it from my hands, and then quickly turns it over, presumably to check for wrinkles. Hey, I'm not that careless. I handle manga all the time, you know. I just wanted to make sure. Can you blame me for being paranoid? I don't give people my manga every day, you know. That's... that is true. I don't blame you. Well... oh. Well, anyway, let me put this one back. I'm gonna get the next one, okay? Maybe we'll read it together again. That'd be cute. Natsuki makes her way to the closet. I follow her. So, you're gonna tell me everything you thought, right? Where did this volume leave off again? I forget. Uh, the chapter ended when Minori and Alice found- MONICA! Natsuki's voice resonates out from inside the closet. Huh? I peer inside. All of Natsuki's books are lined up on the top shelf. Did you move my manga again? Uh, sorry, sorry. The teacher got mad at me for taking up so much space in a closet. So I had to move some stuff around, and it cleaned up a little bit. 
It's all still there. I just had to organize it a bit. Ugh. The top shelf is far above Natsuki's short head. She makes a futile hop, trying to figure out how to reach her manga. Jeez. This is so inconvenient. I'm moving all these back down. There's plenty of room on these shelves. Why don't I help her? Why don't I help her get it? Be a cool guy. And besides, they're really pretty to look at when they're all lined up. Why would you waste that on the top shelf? Uh, Natsuki, there's a stool on the wall there. In the closet, there's a collapsible stool that's hanging on the wall. If you want, I can reach up there and hand them to you. I can get them myself! Natsuki grabs the stool from the wall and unfolds it, stubbornly. You think I'm too short or something? I mean, uh... I KNOW IT! Well, you know what? Just watch me! Natsuki hops onto the stool, which ends up being a little wobbly because of its clap collapsible design. Uh, uh! She's about to fall into our arms. I love you. Careful! I KNOW WHAT I'M DOING! Standing on the stool, Natsuki's fingertips reach the top shelf. The stool would be enough for me to easily grab the books, but Natsuki is being stubborn, per usual. Uh, uh! Natsuki uses her fingers to scoot one of the smaller boxes to the edge of the shelf. See? Kya! The box suddenly tips. Natsuki barely catches it before it falls on the floor. The stool wobbles. Uh, uh! Losing balance, Natsuki hops off the stool. Thankfully, she was able to stay on her feet. Gosh dang it, we're supposed to catch her, dude. Thankfully, she was able to stay on her feet. She holds the box triumphantly. There! Having almost fell, Natsuki is a bit shaken up. Jeez, no need to prove yourself to me. There's no way you'll be able to get the bigger boxes like that. I can reach them, so just- I SAID I COULD DO IT! I don't want your help, okay? <sighs> I'm gonna get a chair, so just hang on. Natsuki forces her way past me out of the closet. Let's see. The classroom chairs have the desks attached, so they're too inconvenient to fit into the closet. Aha! Natsuki trots over to the teacher's desk, which has a computer chair. Those are the swivelly kind, this is a bad idea, just- Oh my god. She rolls it on its wheels back over to the closet. Um... It's a little dangerous, since the chair swivels and rolls. But I've already learned my lesson, so I keep my mouth shut, plus maybe she'll fall on us again. Natsuki climbs onto the chair, then slowly balances onto her feet. Since she refuses my help, I take a seat with my back- No, you gotta stand up, cause she's about to bust her head. Oh, oh, I see! I understand, get this butt away from- what the- Aha, there we go! See? I can easily do it now! Natsuki grabs a stack of manga and bends down to put it on the shelf below. Oh, oh! The chair swivels. Natsuki catches herself on the shelf. What are you doing? Can we at least hold the chair steady instead of sitting and doing nothing? Who was it who told me not to help again? Yeah, 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 I got you. I hold the chair while Natsuki reaches back up. Her butt has to be directly in his face at this point. Huh? I, I can... I can almost see up her skirt. Um, uh, I force myself to turn away. Good guy. Natsuki seriously didn't think this through. Once she realizes, I'll be dead. Huh? Natsuki wraps her arms around the pa Parfait Girls box set, easily the largest one on the shelf. Uh, heavy. Uh, hey, my dude. I, I don't think I can bend down without falling. Hurry, take this one. Huh? But then I have to let go of the chair. That's fine. J just for a second. Hurry up. Uh, okay. Let me just stand up. I slowly release my grip from the chair. Uh, what do you mean stand up? Natsuki looks down at me. Why are you all the way back? Uh? uh? She just figured out that we could see up that butt. Natsuki looks like she just realized something, but she'll lose her balance if she moves. Natsuki, the box! What are you looking at? Huh? You're trying to look at my... my, my. Natsuki's legs shake. I, I'm not, I swear, I was just... Natsuki, don't try to move. Just give me the box. You, you perv! You set me up! Go away! Get out! But, but... I'll do it myself! Uh, uh... The chair suddenly swivels beneath Natsuki's feet. Natsuki! Kya! The scene turns to chaos in a split second. The chair flies from under Natsuki's feet. Frantically, I try to catch her. The box topples out of her hands, and the books go flying. She's gonna be so mad at us, and this is not even our fault, dude. I got you! Oh! Did we catch her, though? The full force of Natsuki's body against mine throws me- Why? She weighs like four pounds. A whole bunch of books pelt me in the face. Natsuki tries to shield herself with her own arms as her face lands straight on my chest. Uh, my right arm and my back seriously felt the impact. Oh man, she's frazzled, my guys. Uh, uh. Slowly, Natsuki comes to her senses. Uh. She presses her arms straight into me to prop herself up. Uh. Natsuki seems to realize that it's not the floor that's beneath her. Uh, uh. Gross, gross! Yeah. A fist pounds into my chest. 
Natsuki then hoists herself to her feet. What were you thinking? You sicko! Everything okay over there? I heard a loud noise. Monica suddenly peers in. Monica! See what happens when you put the manga on the top shelf? <laughs> Are you trying to kill your club members or something? Jeez! <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. It seems like your most- Oh, why she gotta do that? It seems like your most recent club member is a total pervert! So I hope you're happy. I- I didn't- Somehow it's impossible for me to explain this whole bizarre situation to Monica. I didn't do anything, I swear. I know, I know, don't worry. Monica says that quietly to me. Looks like I'm off the hook. Oh no! M my my Huh? I look down. Natsuki is kneeling on the floor, holding one of the books that are scattered all over. There's a large diagonal crease along the page she's desperately trying to smooth out. Oh, it must have landed on the page. Natsuki tries a bit more to fix the crease, but she can't get it out. Suddenly, she gives up and slams the book shut, then throws it to the floor. Instead of continuing to yell, she just lowers her head. <laughs> Natsuki, are you- <laughs> No! Natsuki's voice squeaks. I see tears on her face. Uh, I'll help get the crease out, okay? It's partially my fault, so... Natsuki shakes her head, still looking down. No! I don't even care that much! I'm just... I'm just having a really bad day today. Natsuki sobs again. I didn't mean to take it out on you. I really didn't mean to. It's fine. Is there anything you want to talk about? Natsuki shakes her head. Just... Every day... It's so hard. I just want to come to the club and... <laughs> Natsuki falls silent again. I can't press her, so I can only do what I know how to do. Alright, well, I'll help clean this up, and I'll move the rest of your manga for you. Ah, I pick up volume two of Parfait Girls. We'll set this one aside. This will help cheer you up a bit, right? We can get started on it once I'm done here. Natsuki looks up with her glossy eyes. Her lip quivers. You're... <laughs> You're really nice to me. Huh? That sounds really strange coming from Natsuki. I didn't expect it at all. Well, I'm just treating you like a friend, you know? A friend whose skirt I want to look up. Natsuki lowers her head and stifles another sob. I'm not sure what happened to her today, but being nice is the least I could do. The next couple minutes are silent between us as I begin gathering the scattered books. I make sure to slip them in the box in their correct order. After a little bit, Natsuki starts helping. It isn't long before we're done, and I hoist the box onto the shelf where Natsuki wanted to put it. Then, I get on the stool and quickly finish moving the rest of her books from the top shelf. It's easy for me because I'm not an idiot. All right, that should do it. I hop off the stool. Natsuki averts her gaze. That's G-A-Z-E, not G-A-Y-S. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's nothing. Natsuki is holding the volume I set aside in her hands. All right, I'm ready. Good. Even if you weren't, I'd make you ready anyways. You're taking responsibility for what you said. The thing about cheering me up. If you insist. Oh, she's so cute. Their relationship's very cute right now. We sit in the same spot as last time, and I open the second volume. See, this is interesting because you could totally pick her one day, pick another girl the next day, pick another and, and get kind of like doing the rounds, which is not really like how I like to play the game. I like to pick my favorite girl and go all in. You know, that's how you end up getting married, just saying. Natsuki's mood quickly improves, laughing and pointing things out to me. She's surprisingly sharp, making a note of a lot of subtle, repeated jokes and background elements. In the end, I'm pretty impressed by how everything ties together in this manga. I guess Natsuki has good taste after all. After some time, Monica gets our attention as usual, and it's time to share poems again. Guess I'll be holding on to this for now. Yup! Even you sound more enthusiastic this time! <laughs> well, I'm starting to get into it, you know. <coughs> I told you. Yeah, yeah. I return to my seat and slip the book into my bag. Okay. Uh, Natsuki first, always. What's up, girl? Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me and then back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. Ugh. Huh? Is it that bad? No, no, it's not. It's it's good. It's, it's really good, okay? There, I said it. Uh, this wasn't supposed to happen at all. Why can't you just be bad at this? My poems are supposed to impress you, not the other way around. You're trying to impress me, huh? Obviously. You think I'd let you enjoy Yuri's writing more than mine? Give me a break. Well, uh, in that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? Uh, I'll tell you, you- Natsuki's face freezes, like she just realized something. You- You- You're trying to impress me? Natsuki vigorously scans her eyes over my poem one more time, 
Then the poem slips out of her hands and flutters to the floor. Uh, I have to use the bathroom. Red-faced Natsuki quickly walks out of the room. Hey, my dude, did you do something to Natsuki? I just saw her rush out like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? No, what? I just told her that my voice gets cut in my throat. There's no way I could tell Monica that I'm trying to impress Natsuki. Hmm? Monica sees the poem lying on the floor and swiftly picks it up. She reads through it, her smile not fading. Wait, I, she was going to read it in a second anyways. I see. You wrote this for Natsuki, didn't you? Uh, I mean, not really. In fact, didn't she like your poem a lot the other day too? I'm surprised you know her taste so well already. Are you sure you're not cheating, my dude? Wait, what? Cheating? What do you mean by that? <laughs> Never mind. I'm just kidding. Ha <laughs> ha I didn't understand Monica's joke at all. Anyway, how do you think Natsuki feels about you? Oh, you don't need to answer that. It was just something for you to think about. That's all I think about. That's all I think- Hey! Natsuki comes up and snatches the poem out of Monica's hands. Neither of us had noticed her re-enter the classroom. Did you read this, Monica? <laughs> of course. I liked it. Ugh. You should really stop reading things that aren't for you, you know. You have a bad habit of doing that. Huh? But my dude wrote this poem, and we're supposed to share with everyone, right? Ugh. Natsuki freezes. Yeah, she kind of got a good point. She apparently for forgot that my poem is technically for everyone to read. Okay, well, I think my dude is done sharing this poem with everyone. It's not like anyone would want to read this anyways. In fact, I'm just going to hold on to this. Uh, if you insist. What? Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> like what? Ugh. Never mind. Uh, Natsuki. Uh, I'll give you the poem, but that's still not very fair to Sayori. She hasn't gotten to read it yet. And he doesn't even care about Yuri. So what? Well, I guess my dude is right, Natsuki. It's not fair if you don't let anyone, everyone finish reading it. You know what sucks is I was kind of excited that I wasn't going to have to go through everyone else reading it, but now it looks like it's we're going to. Hmm. <laughs> Fine. Natsuki returns my poem. It's not like she's going to like it, though. Anyway, read my poem now. And no, I won't let you keep it. This is my only copy. All right. <clears throat> Amy Likes Spiders by Natsuki. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. That's a very specific... <laughs> it's a very specific poem right now. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's poem. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, no, no. Uh, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes, you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. So how everyone thinks about my- That doesn't matter. It could be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. See, she wrote it from the perspective of the person who would be judging her. Not from her own perspective, you understand, guys? Who cares what someone likes, as long as they're not hurting anyone, and it makes them happy. I relate- you know, I didn't pick you to be, like, perfect girl, but that's a very good statement. Good job. I agree with that 100%. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least, I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too, right? You know, I'm glad you can appreciate this kind of writing. I mean, I know I was talking about that yesterday, but I've been, well, I've been enjoying sharing my writing with you, so, so consider yourself lucky, okay? <laughs> well, thanks for being honest. What's that supposed to mean? I'm always honest. Jeez. 
Just look forward to tomorrow too, okay? All right, I will. Ugh, best girl. Who should I show my poem to next? It already took Monica off the list. Thank the Lord. Let's do Yuri. Hmm. Um, are you still mad at me? What? For disrespecting Natsuki? Oh, you caught on to that, huh? Don't freaking mess with my girlfriend, you trifling hoe. Because reading this poem, now I know why you got mad at me. Because you, you prefer her writing over mine. That's not really true. Meaning when I disrespected her. I disrespected you too, didn't I? Now you're catching on. Oh no. Yuri, you might be reading into this a little too much. How could I be so stupid? I always let these things happen. Whenever I think before I speak, I just come off as awkward and unlikable. But if I speak without thinking, the things I want to keep inside come out and make people hate me. So please don't force yourself to be around me. I know this is what Monica wants, but it's not fair to you when you could be enjoying your time with Natsuki and Sayori. Yuri, please. It makes it easier for me if you don't express any concern. Besides, I have my books with me. That's all I need. Uh, Yuri smiles sadly and puts her head down on her desk. I'm frustrated. I don't hate her, but it's as if she's not capable of listening to me over her own thoughts. I sigh to myself. All I can do is accept that's how she is. If she wants to be left alone, then I have no choice but to abide by that request. Wow! We didn't even read her poem. We didn't even have to read it, dude. So the choices you're making super, like yesterday they argued and I picked Natsuki's side and now Yuri, she's not really mad at us, but she's like, yeah, just please leave me alone. Who should I show my poem to? Oh, she's reading it. Oh, I like this one, my dude. It has some nice feels in it. Oh, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. Uh -huh. That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad, but that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Uh -huh. You want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, that's not what I said at all, but... You're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point by my fist in the face. Huh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. My small, tiny mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little of both. There's a word for that, right? Melancholy. What's the word I'm looking for? Melancholy also would work, but bittersweet is fine. Yeah. I like the things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something like sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. That should have been your poem, actually. Uh, it is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, my dude. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Bottles by Sayori. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me a lot of friends. Each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be from my friends, 
My friends who aren't smiling, they're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 inside my head. Whoa, she is very depressed. She's saying like, it's the secret place where I keep all my dreams, little balls of sun, her happiness inside her head. She's picking them out, right? Putting them in bottles. She's putting all her happiness in these bottles and then giving all her happiness away to everybody around her, right? She's just giving it all away. And now all she hears is echo inside her head and the stuff she gave her friends shattered on the floor and didn't even make anybody happy. Much deeper than I expected from her, for sure. Holy crap. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being so cheerful. Never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like it was meant to express my- I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Yeah! Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! I'm gonna keep writing until I die! Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori's had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes that are- closed currently makes it hard for me to be pessimistic okay everyone we're all done reading each other's poems right i have something extra planned today so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room is this about the festival well sort of Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival it's not like we could put together anything good in just a few days we'll end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members that's a concern of mine as well i don't really do well with last minute preparations don't worry so much we're gonna keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually gonna be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it yesterday. We're gonna be performing. Performing? P uh, Monica. Yeah, we're gonna be having a poetry performance. Each of us are gonna choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Yatta! That's going to be awful. I would hate to do that at school. Especially in high school. Are you freaking kidding me? It's awful. Sayori's putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You, did, you didn't already start putting these posters up, did you? Eh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. I just didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I, I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, you idiot, so I'm sorry. Hmm. <laughs> but, I still think we should give it our best. <laughs> We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. Okay, so it's my idea, and you guys have to do what I say no matter how much you don't like it. If we start the event, and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings. Being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. <laughs> oh. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ugh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? 
<laughs> Yuri dejectedly glances, glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. Ah, that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh, gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyways, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N no way. Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers, which you already said you didn't want to do? Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Aha! <laughs> of course you can. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. Then she stands behind the poem. Podium. Sorry. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <clears throat> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to play a motion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before? Or is, she, or is she simply a natural? Or did she plan this whole event around the idea of her getting to freaking recite her poem? She did it because she's excited to do it in front of everybody. She wants to look cool because she's super popular and everyone likes. Glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. Is that how you pronounce that? The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. Ah, thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. Ah, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quietly to the podium. This poem's called... Yuri anxiously glances around at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reciting the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into one of her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. Fierce! Sorry, I'm annoying. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside of her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud to her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. It looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sari hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Uh, <laughs> sorry I giggled. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow, it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from her voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes, and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> even my dude liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. What? I don't really understand. Why you gotta poop on her? What is wrong with this Monica girl? She did great. Leave her alone. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That is, well, I've been, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. <clears throat> don't make me go before my dude. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyways. Might as well let my dude lower everyone's standards a little before I have to go. Natsuki. It's fine. It's fine. I might as well get it over with. 
but it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I've only written two poems. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up. <laughs> my my guy is just a, a very normal looking dude in a freaking flannel. He like looks just like me and he's standing up reading this cute poem he wrote just to impress the one girl. His freaking poem is like, Butterflies and sunshine. I like lollipops when they are mine. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyways. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time though. Well, the freaking thing's tomorrow, so yeah, maybe. Oh, all right then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. This poem is called, it's called, why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Oh, sorry. Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem's called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a, a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, do it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. Oh, that's tight then. That's awesome. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Calm the frick down. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far. I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to just get through it. I'm gonna save the freaking game for some reason. Don't know why. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll have to- I don't care about impressing Monica, why would he say that? Ready to go, Sayori? Yep! Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Uh-oh, Natsuki's a little jealous right now. Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, my dude. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. Yeah, they're trying to force me and Sayori to be a couple. We are not a couple. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori's being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. <laughs> Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... Uh, I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. I'm about to have to let this girl down because she's liking us. And I'm gonna have to be like... So let's just say that one day, N Natsuki asks to walk home with you. Oh, really? Huh. Oh, okay, she's saying, hypothetically, let's say Natsuki asks to walk home from with you. What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> well... We're definitely gonna say I'd walk home with Natsuki. Walking home with Natsuki, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, I think I'd be afraid of what she'd do to me if I turned her down. Isn't she, she so cute and fun to be around? That has nothing to do with what I just said. Haha, <laughs> you admitted it! Jeez, there's not even any point in speculating something that's never gonna happen. Well, maybe, but I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry! Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm, if you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. 
but it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such an awful question. Yep, for sure. I just can't lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival's only a few days away. Who knows what'll happen in that time? Yeah. All right, guys, that's all the time I have for Dookie Dookie Glitter Cub today. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, leave your tips and some suggestions down in the comments, but if you spoil, I hate you. I love you guys. Please hit all the little YouTube buttons down there at the bottom if you want to see more from me. And hey, as always, have a bye five. O-I-N-G-P-E-E-P-E-E -E -E -E. Bye!